Hello and welcome to episode 46 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we will be talking about that cloud migration can come at a hefty price tag of its own due to one-time setup costs that are similar to the capital expenses in the traditional data center. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this is a great topic because we are getting, you know, data points that are coming back where, um, you know, enterprises are misestimating what it costs to migrate to cloud. Yeah, so very true. Yeah, so an opening question for you on this show, David, is the estimation of cloud migration cost an evolving art? Yeah, it shouldn't be, but it is. I mean, people are learning more from the mistakes of others. And what's occurring right now, and the reason this is, um, you know, kind of a very topical article is that uh, the C-suites are actually seeing bills from the cloud migration that are way more than the original estimates. And I think what happened was, is that the IT groups who really kind of estimated moving into the cloud and looking at the, um, you know, the, the things that needed to move and the number of people that needed to employ and the tools they needed to leverage and the cloud instances and even migration from, from existing hardware and software platforms and the data center and leaving some things in the data center for longer than they thought have really misestimated, uh, um, in some cases grossly so, you know, the cost of moving and migrating into the cloud. And I think that the reality is that uh, they're not putting enough time and energy into thinking through, you know, what the costs are going to be. And I can understand where the first generation of cloud migrations were very difficult to estimate because we didn't have a lot of set of metrics that are going forward. A lot of best practices where people could, you know, do the estimation. They typically weren't leveraging consultants. They typically weren't leveraging people that were working across domains. And then mistakes were being made. But you know, here we are in the, you know, the second and third you know, cloud migration uh, systems are basically mass migration systems that are occurring today. And now we have uh, a pretty good understanding of what we're going to pay for, a pretty good, pretty good understanding of best practices and, and the way things are going to work. But we're misestimating by a large margin. And that's going to be a big deal, especially if you're a publicly traded company. And you could find you missed your numbers because the cost of migrating to the cloud was way over what the estimations were. And therefore, the cost of the business were in cost to IT. We're way over the IT metrics, and people are going to punish you in the market for doing that. So I can't stress this enough. You need to get smart at doing, you know, cost estimations of migrating to the cloud. You know, it's almost, you know, it's almost analogous to if you're leveraging a contractor, uh, you know, to finish your kitchen, and they show up and they say it's fifty thousand dollars to do it start to finish, and then they come back the week after that and they said, "Oh, we say fifty thousand, we meant seventy-five. Oh, do, and then they come back the week after, "Oh, do we say it means seventy-five? We meant a hundred. And we're basically dealing with the same sort of concept here. And, and ultimately, if you're the owner of that kitchen, you're going to kind of demand that they come up with a price that's going to be consistent and hold their nose to the, to the grindstone in terms of how those numbers are going to be, where IT should be subjected to the same thing. So this is about not being as disciplined as they should be, not being as inclusive in understanding what the metrics are that you need to measure, not figuring out how to value the technology, and not using the right people to do it. And this is going to be one of the things we're going to see in 2019 a lot, where people are going to have a huge hangover with cloud, not necessarily because cloud computing technology failed them, but because it was more than they thought the cost was going to be. And the reality is they didn't understand what the costs were in the first place. So th this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine, as you can tell. Yeah, it's so true. So true. And it, and it really is to the detriment of the uh the deployment of a successful cloud because people just really don't know what they're, they're spending and, and how that's going to affect the, the return on investment of uh, what they think they're, they're putting in to get the most out of the cloud, which is the, the irony there. And, and I think, you, you know, there, there's no excuse really anymore for, for getting this wrong. I mean, if you're paying, you know, fine detail, uh, you know, tuning in to exactly what you're needing from the cloud. Uh, and I think now that there, and I, the reason why I say there's there's no real excuse is because the infrastructure service providers are actually offering tools where you can calculate, uh, you know, the usage of uh, you know SaaS and things like that. So they've they've really they're really 
it baffles me there's still problems that people don't actually know the cost of what they're they're trying to use it's like you say you know you have a contractor in the fitted kitchen you're not going to expect that to go way off budget without you know some sort of massive uh, impact on the finances it's just it's just insane so look you know people should check out you know microsoft amazon you know google they've all got their own calculative uh, platforms to do their 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 call on that so it just baffles me dave so no, it's, a, it's a great topic <laughs> it must frustrate the hell out of you <laughs> Well, well, it does, and I think that uh, one of the the things that I think we are doing is we are you know understanding the technology behind it and doing the metrics in terms of how many cloud services we're going to leverage. And you know, the, to what you just mentioned, that's absolutely correct. There's plenty of tools out there to figure that out. But what we're, what we're missing is the implement the impact on taxes, depreciation of hardware and software that we're outsourcing, the ability to, in essence, uh, display some of the data center uh, hardware and equipment, and also square footage. You know, to make that happen, it gets into a lot of very accounting CPA kinds of things. And that's why I urge IT, you know, as soon as they can, to get finance involved and you go to get the CFO's team involved and get them to really, you know, kind of understand what's going on. Because quite frankly, you know, those folks are the experts in estimating costs and how it's going to impact budget where IT typically is not. And so we have the wrong people who are making those decisions in many cases, not all. There's There's obviously some good you know, cost estimators and a lot of IT teams as well. But generally speaking, we have a tendency to get a D minus in that. And until we're able to kind of realize we have a problem and, you know, go through a 12 step program to fix the problem, this is going to be something that's going to haunt us in 2019, 2020. And my big concern is going to be impact on trusting cloud computing, you know, to really get in there and solve problems when people are underestimating what it actually costs. And I think that It'll leave a bad taste in many people's mouths around cloud computing, very much like it did with client server and distributed computing and moving to the Internet. You know, these waves of changes occurred. We have a tendency not to consider the all-in cost of making this happen. And that's going to be impactful to the adoption, um, the reaction, the ability for the board of directors, the investors to really consider the core value of cloud computing. Yep, so very true and so very well said. And it moves us on nicely to your top three tips. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear those this week, Dave. Yeah, number one, you know, consider everything. Um, and this is actually mistakes that I made. So I've been, you know, estimating cloud-based projects for a long period of time for clients and the ability to kind of put these models together as to what the cost of migration is going to be, what the cost per application is going to be, triaging the existing systems and doing these very complex assessments as to what the as is state is and where we're moving into a 2B state and what impact that's going to have on IT in terms of how much costs are going to be spent. Not considering the tax impacts, not considering uh, the impact to other systems, not considering the fact that they're buying a company in a year and that was known and how much of an integration task that that's going to happen. So you have to consider everything, which is tough because, you know, we get into something that's very complex to mega complex. And so leave that to the experts who are able to do it. And that's why we leverage accountants. And that's why we have uh, you know, CPAs and tax and tax attorneys who come in there and really kind of assist us in understanding what the impact is going to be. And sometimes it's a it's a a, a very uh, kind of a complex oil and water scenario, and we're mixing the IT guys with the finance guys. Uh, but it's something you have to do, and you need a five to seven year out plan. So you know, this isn't about two years out in terms of what the impact is going to be in terms of cost. So. This is about leveraging a model that's going to exist five to seven years into the future, and what what the planned impacts are going to be. And a lot of people push back to me on that because it's how are we going to know where the business is going to be? How are we going to know what technology is going to be? And it's very difficult to do the estimates on that. Not, not really, because if we're understanding the change of technology, which is typically going to be accelerating over time, we understand you know, what the regulation changes are. We understand what the business impact and changes are. We understand what the likely mergers and acquisition activities are going to be. This really kind of puts things on the radar screen as a more realistic understanding of what costs are going to be impacting the business going forward. They're typically always going to be wrong, but it's better to have a plan in place which is based on good metrics as much as possible than no plan in place where we're just totally surprising everybody with, you know, half a billion dollar overruns in terms of, um, you know, IT cost over the next five years. And that's, that's unacceptable. And then watch for changing costs over time. I think that, uh, the reality is that you know cloud computing, even though it's gotten cheaper uh, over the years, it's it could go up, you know, at some point in time, it could go down at some point in time, and we need to kind of factor that into that. And so, 
the ability to kind of uh, put in reserve instances and pay ahead of capacity and dealing with the cloud. Those are strategic things you should be looking into to kind of keep the cost consistent. Yeah, great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. And, and you mentioned, um, you know, the regulations, which can be a huge constriction on, you know, the return on investment into cloud and, and forecasting cloud. And we actually covered some great topics uh, on the Australia show this week. So, uh, viewers, if you're watching this, the, the C-Suite show for the first time this week, make sure you watch the Australia show. Uh, although it's about Australia, it covers some great points on the regulations and how they've affected cloud and, and how business are, businesses are now uh, less constricted because of those regulations. So check that show out as well. And Dave, those th top three tips, fantastic. So uh, another great C-suite show this week, and uh, thanks for being on it. Yeah, it's great to be here, man. Be good. <laughs> Thanks very much. And, and look, everyone, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. Uh, David's on Twitter, uh, which is at David Limpican. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Facebook, Instagram as well. So come and check us out, like us, follow us, do all that sort of stuff. And until next week, thanks for watching.